thank you once again to the University of Tokyo for the hosting of the event and of these two uh, training sessions. We know that they are filmed, so uh, if you are watching this through the video, well, uh, you also have the opportunity to learn a few things about this event. So just to begin with, uh, this event in Tokyo is co-organized uh, between uh, uh, the DV has the German Forum uh, for German, uh, German Science and Science Innovation, Innovation Forum, Forum mm -hmm. uh, Tokyo, and your Access Japan, also based in Tokyo. So uh, myself, uh, Macha P, uh, representative of your Access Japan, and Constance and I from Science Forum. Exactly, and so it will be a two-head uh, training today. Uh, First of all, today's outline, we will discuss uh, these uh, three points. Why science communication? What is the Falling Walls? What is the Falling Walls Lab? What is the Falling Walls Lab Tokyo? And uh, how to prepare a good uh, contribution to uh, the Falling Walls Lab Tokyo. Uh, so maybe I will start with a, uh, a short introduction on science communication, what it is uh, and what it means. Uh, maybe you can see here that this might be an example of uh, one type of science communication that you may have uh, uh, had to endure during your studies, probably. It's a person with a lot of data to present and not presenting it maybe uh, in uh, the most uh, intelligible manner, but it's something that uh, one does when uh, someone in a position of a uh, highly, uh, highly knowledgeable person presents uh, uh, research and data to people who need to learn from that data. So this is a very specific case, professor, students. You may call that uh, one type of science communication. This is not obviously exactly what we uh, will discuss today. This is just to say that there are different types of targets when you're communicating on your research. And, uh, uh, and obviously, the, uh, the objective of the following walls is to uh, uh, disseminate about disseminate your research results to uh, uh, a whole range of different targets. So I would actually like to start with a question to you. Uh, uh, how do you see uh, science communication is useful to your uh, everyday uh, uh, life as researchers and, and scientists? So. Question and answer. <laughs> How can it be useful? Well, it can be useful to explain to other colleagues from other departments what you are doing and why you are doing okay. research. Also to, to people outside the academia world. Okay, so that's different. But what, what, what would be the meaning of, of doing this? What is the, the objective? When you discuss with people from other departments, for example, uh, to get a view on my research, if it makes sense, mm -hmm. and uh, if my plan makes sense, or if I could get some advice on how to change certain things. Okay. There might be some things that I cannot see, but others from other fields. So to have an external point of view yeah, of yeah. some sort. Another example, maybe? Um, I think that as a researcher, it's important to share your um, knowledge and the things you are doing with the general public, because generally the majority of jobs are funded by taxpayers <laughs> doing with their taxes. So it's a sort of duty of us as a researcher telling them how we are using the money and why it's important to invest in science. What, how science can impact their daily life and also um, showing them that sometimes even if um, the original goal of the science was not in direct application, um, the results from that scientific uh, process resulted in something that now is used by everybody. And one example is the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good example. Yes, I mean we, we've had a couple of very good points. These are, I mean, this is not a comprehensive list, right? 
but it's uh, just a few ideas. Uh, so you have different layers, and they all have, let's say, different objectives. So uh, the first one is to get funding to do the research, and to do that, you have to appeal mostly to peers, so researchers from your own field, because they will judge your research. That happens when you uh, write a, a scientific publication. That happens also when you write a, a funding proposal. Uh, you have the other layer, and we, we've had a, 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 a glance at it right now. What they call innovation is basically getting uh, point of views from different uh, people with uh, different backgrounds. You have uh, somehow a responsibility also. Uh, this is more what you would uh, 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 see under the open science uh, initiatives, where you have to uh, give not only your uh, 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 results and methods, but you have to uh, make them open and uh, easy to uh, to understand by other people, so still in the scientific field, but in uh, uh, a wide uh, array of different fields, so that the, uh, the scientific community has a whole program. And, and the last one, we've also discussed it right now, what I would call accountability is, yes, well, either it's taxpayers' money or whatever money it is, but at some point the, 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 the meaning of the research in whatever field it may be, is indeed to have some progress in the society in the end. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're doing fundamental research or uh, uh, acutely applied research, in the end, the goal is still to, to give back to the society. So at all of these stages, you might have uh, different strategies to communicate. And basically, yes, the goal is uh, uh, to go from a stage that is like this, which might be what you have if you're listening to this guy here, to something that is a bit more like this, where uh, people who listen or who read your contributions are real. So this is what we wanted to say about science communication as a short introduction, and I will give the floor to my colleague Constanze for the introduction of the uh, following ones. Now. Okay. So, um, the following laws, you have an idea what it refers to? Okay, it's um, linked to the Berlin Wall, or rather the fall of the Berlin Wall. So it's kind of, kind of lending this image of um, this was an historic event that really changed a lot in, uh, in the society. It, um, like, as a consequence, had uh, education, the shift of the educational system, economic system, right? Everything was overhauled uh, for the eastern part of Germany, and then growing together, um, this had a huge uh, societal impact, of course, and then going beyond Germany. It's uh, not limited to this. So, falling walls is lending that image, yeah, having a big impact. So, this was also what you uh, mentioned, and then I'm going into explaining why. Um, there is uh, a foundation in Germany, the Folly Waltz Foundation, um, based in Berlin, and they're kind of the mastermind behind uh, the format that we are going to talk about today, um, which is the uh, Folly Waltz um, Lab. So, what is this um, Folly Waltz Lab in general? Um, it's an event format for young academics um, for professionals to present their ideas, their uh, scientific research, their startup project, their social initiative. So the thing that you burn for. Um, and it's, it's kind of a, a set format. Um, it's, uh, you, you can come from totally different um, backgrounds of uh, research, but the format is that you have three minutes to explain. And this is maybe also about the time that you would have if you go to a conference, you were explaining before, if you go to a different department or you attend a conference, someone's asking you during the break, you cannot have 15 minutes to uh, explain about, so maybe this comes really close to the situation that you have, right? Um, so yeah, in that sense, it's, a, it's kind of a, a format that also helps then a wider audience to kind of get a sneak preview into a totally different research field. Um, yeah. Then what is uh, the Falling Walls Lab like in uh, Tokyo? Oh, okay, to, to give a little bit more background, because this Falling Walls Lab 
that um, is planned in Tokyo stands in a wider context. Um, in about 16 uh, cities this year, countries, um, polling walls that are uh, conducted and people participating in there, first you have to uh, qualify to participate in, in that event that takes place in uh, May 12th, um, have a chance to move on, this is like what we have in mind from the organizing side, to attend a global lab that would then take place in Germany, uh, of November. So there you would have a lot of people then gathering who participated and um, qualified in the uh, labs on the country level, international um, labs uh, to move on to this global lab. And then you have an audience uh, from, yeah, from Germany but also with uh, via live stream um, wider audience of, of researchers, of research interested people, of media, um, people from companies um, who are just really curious what is going on there, um, what new findings are out there, um, and yeah, maybe um, get in touch right with young innovators and researchers. Um, there is also uh, another format, um, it's called the Falling Walls Conference. This takes place then on the real anniversary of the um, Fourth Wall on the 9th of November. Um, and there again, the stage is even broadened. Um, so you have then about 600 people attending. It's um, a lot of uh, media presence. Um, so this can be, if you look on that track, like to uh, really promote um, the project that you're working about. Um, I think that's a really, uh, yeah, um, interesting um, project stage. Okay. So for the uh, following wall set in um, in Tokyo. Um, we see about 10 to 20 people uh, that can act as a speaker there. Um, so these speakers would be selected based on, on the abstracts that are handed in. Again, the background of the research is, or the, yeah, the um, research field is, can be anything, just has to be um, uh, convincing and you have to fit in. Yeah, um, and um, yeah, you, you have to appeal to this. So like it, it has to be um, really interesting and uh, relevant um, for your audience. Um, so the audience will be basically invited um, by by Euroaccess. Um, um, Tokyo University um, will of course promote internally, and with the uh, German Science and Innovation Forum, uh, we also have um, so to say the contacts those people who are then uh, yeah, really the attentive listeners, it's often also the, of course, the um, fellow or the colleagues or fellow researchers of the um, speakers themselves that attend. Okay, and um, at this uh, uh, foreign walls lab in, in Tokyo, you have the chance then to qualify, to go on to this um, global lab in Berlin. So they're going to be two people that can be selected. On, on this track. Um, there is a jury um, consisting of um, some representatives from, from German and Japanese um, organization who will select um, based on certain criteria that um, Matthew is going to present um, in a minute. Um, what more to say, yeah, looking at the presentation again, it's important to say uh, the things that you present are your own work. It's not a team project that you, as a representative, introduce, but it has to be your own work. Um, and then, yeah, you have a non-expert audience in the sense that people attending are, are just from different fields. So they're not going to be from the same research field. So this will also give you already some implication on how do you explain it, right? Because they, they're not used to your um, more uh, yeah, technical terms in, in your research field. So this is, uh, of course, one hint. And, and then we, there might be someone who um, joins from a university, from a research institute or company, um, or yeah, just friends you know, joining. Um, so it's really diverse. And then you have to think about how do you explain about your project. And um, yeah, 
three minutes, probably it's good to do it somehow in an entertaining way. But I think Matthew has uh, more recommendations and hints on that one. Um, for the applications, there is uh, a deadline, the 9th of April. Um, in terms of eligibility, there are also some uh, restrictions, right, in the sense when you um, got your degree, so for instance, for, for a bachelor's, it should not be more than 10 years ago, um, but you can check this um, on the website. And for the abstract, there is a really clear format, um, also to make it easier than later on following that same format for all um, suggested topics uh, for, for the jury to, to pick, right, and to compare. Yes, um, the application has to be in English. Um, this is uh, important. Um, for the presentation later on, you, you don't have to be like the, the native speaker. You just have to get your uh, message across. But I think on the, on the way of uh, the presentation style, Matthew can help you out with some more hints. Okay. Thank you. So thank you, Constance, for the introduction. And I'm taking back the uh, last part of this uh, training. And we uh, will uh, view uh, aspects of how how to prepare a, uh, a good contribution specifically to this uh, following wall step. Okay. Uh, just before we go on to details, this is actually a quote from uh, last year's uh, winner, uh, Anna Bellissimo and uh, what she says about uh, uh, her process of going through writing an abstract for this uh, uh, event. Uh, so of course she's uh, uh, saying a lot of things here, but I want to, uh, uh, I want to focus on, on a few things. The first thing that she actually says is uh, practice and perfect. And this is uh, uh, true obviously for a, uh, um, a long talk, but this is also true for an abstract. And specifically, it is uh, uh, extremely true for an abstract with such uh, 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 strict limitations on the number of uh, words and characters that you are allowed to use. So maximum 200 characters for the outline of the problem, the problem that you are addressing, and maximum 200 characters also for the solution that you propose. This is very short. Uh, it makes, uh, I don't know, uh, 40, uh, yeah, probably uh, 40, 50 words each. That's, that's really, really short. Uh, so practice and perfect. So write something down, see if it works, see if it works on your colleagues, etc. then write it down again if it doesn't. And obviously, some of the points that you have to address, what is the goal of your research project? Uh, uh, what is the potential and impact? We've already had a discussion on that earlier on today. Uh, and then how to describe these, because they are complex processes, I suppose, in your research in a simple way, but also concise and, and catchy, has to be somehow entertaining. Uh, just one, one, one thing, uh, a precision about uh, what was just uh, said uh, minutes ago by Constanze about the, uh, um, the research project. The research project, indeed, has to be your own. Uh, you are, most of you, part, I guess, of research teams, so your colleagues probably have uh, contributions to your uh, research works, but what you present must not be you know, a, a publication from someone else in the team, but you have to be involved in the project. This is what it means, right? Uh, uh, it cannot be also uh, presenting, just presenting something that was done five years ago by someone in the US. It has to be something that you want As is quite obvious, but we, we, we like to stress uh, on that aspect because some people uh, uh, might have the impression that they can present something that is scientific, but that is not their own. This is not the case. It's really a place where you present something that is your own research. So uh, the first thing that you have to look for when applying for something like that or for anything else for that uh, uh, matters is how the scoring works. So in this case, this is a science communication contest, so you have science, you have communication. And uh, well, there's uh, also uh, two very clear parts uh, in the scoring criteria. 
uh, actually the most important are the, uh, the science related part. Uh, the two on your left here, so you have breakthrough factor, uh, uh, which is just a name to, uh, to uh, see if the uh, research project is uh, uh, bringing something new to the field, is innovative. The relevance and impact, well, it's, uh, does this research, uh, uh, does it have a, a, a small impact on the society or will it have a, a large impact on a very specific uh, focused field, for example? These two points, we will not go over them today because, I mean, this is what your research is about, so we will not coach you on your research, but uh, what we will discuss is the last part, which is the uh, structure and performance. Which is, I, I would like to say, even though it is one third of the scoring, it is the most important because if the if the uh, the contribution isn't well structured and if the performance also is not good, uh, you don't get the message across, and, and therefore people cannot understand if your contribution is relevant, has impact, uh, or uh, if it is innovative or not. So this is very important. And so in structure of performance, obviously you have uh, is the presentation. Uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, flowing with a clear structure uh, is the performance uh, 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 of the uh, candidate easy to understand uh, but also entertaining etc etc so we will see that and this has been said by uh, my colleague uh, uh, several times but I also want to stress that especially because we are here in Japan this is not an English literacy contest so it doesn't matter if you have uh, 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 an Oxford English or a Japanese English. Uh, what matters is do you get your message across or not? Okay, uh, so how to get a good structure? Well, I'm sure you, you all know uh, uh, what it means to, to write about your scientific project. You, you've probably uh, uh, have had uh, several publications already, so I'm not going to be long here, but obviously, what you have to do is not uh, uh, sit in front of the computer and start writing the abstract online when you want to submit. You need, you need to plan it, you need to think about the uh, um, uh, uh, um, the adjustment of, of the, the different ideas that you uh, want to uh, convey. Maybe you can write an outline, this is more specifically true for a talk, I would say. Still, it's important to prepare in advance. And then, um, this would be extremely classic, but these are all points that you need to address. What is the problem? Uh, what is the background of your of your uh, research project? Basically, what you are trying to solve as an issue. Uh, the main part will be really what your research is about. So, what is really specific of your research? Maybe it's a method. Maybe, maybe I don't know. It's a new technique, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, conclusion. Obviously, if you have results, it's nice to present. Some results already. If you don't, uh, maybe you can ex you can uh, uh, um, go on and explain what you might expect as future results. Uh, and this is more about the uh, impact. So hindsight would be uh, somehow the big picture. Uh, what will this become in the future, or what will be the impact to say society or the research field or policy, for example? Good performance. Uh, well. Structure is, is, is nice, but doesn't mean that you have to go for a very formal, classic uh, experience of, say, uh, uh, a, uh, a scientific conference. Uh, so basically, you should not do what I am doing right now, I think. Uh, so maybe you can uh, have something a bit more personal. Uh, if you have something that you like, and that might be relevant uh, to the subject, you can try to include it. It, it might uh, make the uh, contribution uh, feel a bit more uh, entertaining. Uh, for example, last year's winner, uh, she uh, was uh, very much interested in uh, drawings, actually, manga and, uh, and comics, and uh, she actually isn't that good at drawing, so she asked other people within her friends and families to, so she described her research project to them and she asked them to uh, have drawings of them. And uh, in the end, not only she used the drawings as, uh, you know, graphic elements in her uh, contribution, so in this case in the talk, but also it helped her uh, 
uh, understanding how to make a research which is quite complex, uh, how to uh, uh, make it understandable by people who know nothing uh, about her field. So this is uh, an interesting uh, example. Engage your audience, uh, be it in the abstract or be it in, in, uh, in, the, in the total contribution. It's a very short amount of either words or time. So if you find a way to uh, uh, to make people interested or, or somehow to interact with the audience, uh, it's very good. So in a talk, it's quite easy. You can ask a question maybe uh, in the abstract. Maybe you can make it look like a rhetorical question. I don't know. But you have to think about how to uh, uh, how to attract interest from the audience. And yes, this I, I, we already said, but practice perfect, practice perfect. And this is the only way of, of having something that is solid. Uh, one also thing is that you might have happenings, so it might happen that, uh, let's say if it is a, a, a during the talk that the projector doesn't work, the video doesn't show, it doesn't matter, what you should be worried about is how you convey the message, not, not the, uh, the technicality of your talk. And it's also the, the same case for the abstract, for example. This is actually an interesting detail, the, uh, to submit the abstract online and it's uh, non-HTML format, so it's, it's only words, and you have, it's only uh, characters, and you only have a limited amount of characters, so you cannot, for example, uh, put a, a URL link to your past publications, for example. This is not exactly what uh, enters in the abstract. Uh, so if your plan was to say, okay, I'm gonna make it short, but I'm gonna put a, a URL link, then you cannot do it. And in front of the computer, while you're submitting the abstract, maybe what you should think is, okay, now I have to spin this another way and I have to rewrite it. So this is quite important because it might happen uh, uh, to you or to someone else, but uh, technology happenings is uh, something that you should uh, uh, think in advance. Accessibility. So when you're either writing or, or talking about your uh, research work, uh, as we already saw today, uh, you may be in front of different audiences. So you can have uh, uh, an audience that is composed of uh, colleagues or at least people who know about your field and your research. Uh, you might have uh, uh, friends or uh, some people who are in your close circle but who don't know especially about your research. You might have just normal general public uh, whom you do not know and whom also they uh, uh, and whom also do not know about your uh, research project so you have to uh, uh, think about how to convey different messages to these uh, different groups and this is especially true for the um, Fournier Walls lab because uh, in the jury there might be people who are close to your field uh, but there will also be uh, in the jury people who are from the, the uh, uh, scientific uh, community but outside of your field definitely that will be. Uh, and in the public also there will be people who are completely uh, general public so you have to address all these uh, three groups actually in the following ones uh, and so what is the level of detail that you want to convey to people who know about your field uh, and how you do it, what is the level of detail that is needed from general uh, people with a scientific background, what is the level of detail that you can uh, uh, allow uh, 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 people with no scientific knowledge to understand. This is something that is quite important. Still, obviously, messages clear and short is always better. Uh, this is also quite important, use simple words. Uh, uh, in scientific publications, definitely, what you are uh, 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 prone to do is to use uh, uh, well words that are only understood by your community. This is not what you uh, should be doing here. Uh, when uh, and also you you are also prone to use uh, um, verbose uh, phrases and, and things that are too long to be easy to understand uh, in the configuration that we have at the phone walls lab, either in the abstract or in the talk. Uh, and so this is a uh, thing that you should avoid. Uh, and also, the, uh, and this is especially true for the, uh, the talk contribution, 
uh, when you are in front of a, uh, let's say, multicultural audience, you have to take care about your flow of ideas. If you speak too slow or uh, too fast, uh, there might be things that uh, either are difficult to understand or just boring. So you have to adapt to uh, your audience. And, and here, I just did one thing that I said you shouldn't do. So this uh, phrase here, I wrote, not fast, not too slow, throttle your flow of ideas. Do you understand this phrase? Yes? Do you understand this phrase? Yes? No? No? See? Yes? Yes? So we have a yes. So for example, many people here do not, or maybe they might not really understand the, the meaning of this phrase. So this is exactly what I should not do. I, I used a, a fancy word. So with what word would you replace this one? Slow down. Yeah, it can be slowed down, but it can also be go faster. So, yeah. Um, optimize is too complex. Well, yeah, we, we have a, a proposition here, I think. We had one. Please, go ahead. I'm taking Oh, you're taking. Ah, no, 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 that's cheating, that's cheating. Okay, but yeah, I, I mean, at least the idea is here, uh, slow down or go faster, but then in this case, you use four words instead of one. Well, I don't know, maybe you can use manage your flow of ideas or, or arrange your flow of, whatever, but you have to, you have to think about this uh, aspect. So, uh, once again, uh, uh, abstract specifics, especially in our case where you have 200 characters, 200 characters, it's, it is really short. So uh, you have to write things that are exact, that are clear, uh, that are descriptive also. This is quite important. You can write things in English and in many languages uh, that are uh, uh, very indirect, that are very uh, uh, long to, to take form. Uh, this is quite important to avoid these. Um, yes, words that have exact meanings is, is easier. Easier uh, Avoid elegant words also, just what we saw is, is quite important. So I have a, a, a short, or a couple of uh, short exercises for you. I hope it's uh, big enough for you to see. So let's read these sentences. I'll give you, what, 10 seconds. So this one. So 10 seconds, same thing. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Which one do you prefer? Which one you think reads better? Number one, who's for number one? Who's for number one? No one. Who's for, who's for number two? Number two, everyone. Okay. Yeah, well, that's quite obvious. Uh, not only it is shorter, but also it, it, it conveys the whole idea better. Uh, even if, personally, I don't understand what this uh, flat rolled aluminum is, I have no idea what it is. Uh, even if I, I read this really quickly, um, I, I can still understand that there is a subject, uh, there is an action, so customers are demanding that these things, I don't know anything about, uh, uh, are more whatever, uh, uh, the thickness is, is changed, the length, the profile is changed. This I understand. From this one, and from this I understand in 10 seconds. From this one, in 10 seconds I'm not so sure. Maybe in one or two minutes. Yes, of course I understand, but I need more time. And it's, it's less clear to me. So this is just an example of a, uh, this is actually uh, extracted from, from a, a real publication. Uh, now I have another exercise on uh, uh, past abstracts that were submitted to uh, previous editions of the uh, Phonemals Lab Tokyo. Uh, 
So as you could see in the, in the slide where we presented uh, what aspect will the, F, will the abstract have, you have a title that is called tagline actually. Uh, you have, so this is, uh, uh, you have breaking the wall off and then you have 40 characters maximum. You have a problem, so this is the problem that you are uh, addressing, 200 characters maximum. You have the solution, 200 characters, and you have a teaser that is, um, I would call that um, some kind of a subtitle. That is uh, 50 characters maximum. Uh, and uh, so I have two different examples today, and uh, what we will do is, how much time do you have? We will work on, uh, let's say, for a start, we will work on the uh, title and problem only, right? So I will ask you to uh, to read uh, the title and problem. Ten seconds, same thing. And I have another one. Same thing, read the title and the problem. Three, two, one, zero. So let's have some comments about these. What you think is easy to understand, less easy to understand. Uh, I'm not saying which one is better, but like, what do you think about these two? Maybe comments, someone? Nobody knows what is CMT. Nobody, I, I'm sure that the, the, the <laughs> person who wrote the article knows what is CMT, but yeah, no, I don't know. You don't know, probably a lot of people Someone don't know. Exactly, yeah. Well, this is an, an easy example, yes. Something else? Generic in this Aha, case. Yeah, this is also in a case, case. The problem and the title matches because you have kind of change in mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's, it's, uh, that's it. Actually, that's, that's an interesting it's point. Medical issues, so general, it it's could be uh, applied to several kinds of medical issues. And then in the problem, is one specific. Exactly. So it would be better to put also the specific issue in the title. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a very good point. Actually, in, in this title you have, uh, well, I mean, this is just common words, inaction, climate change, this is simple words, but still the, the, the problem is, is uh, pretty much defined. Uh, and then you don't have to go over it for a, a long time here. Uh, uh, the only technical term that is used here is CO2, which, well, is, uh, I guess, okay with most people. Uh, indeed, and, and in here, even though, well, reading the title, we understand it's about medical issues, but what medical issues? I mean, it's, it's quite, uh, it's, it's way too general to understand. And there is a, 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 a stark difference between the very generic title and the uh, way too specific uh, uh, definition of the problem, where we don't understand what CMT is, Neuropathies, meh, okay, maybe pathogenesis, meh, not sure, etc., etc. So even though in most cases you could say that the problem is, is defined uh, uh, somewhat clearly, definitely in the second case, uh, uh, anybody who reads this and understands it uh, uh, can understand this uh, quite efficiently, I would say. Um, And also, so maybe we can have a, a quick word, uh, otherwise we won't have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, uh, maybe we can have a quick word about the, the teaser uh, in the end. So, uh, uh, same thing here. So the teaser for breaking the wall of medical issues is novel approach for saving incurable patients of, of what? We don't know. Obviously we only have 50 characters, so it's difficult. Yes. Still, this subtitle doesn't bring a, a lot of uh, new information uh, uh, with regards to this. Whereas in this case, you have 
something that is, it's very short, yes, so it's very generic. I mean, humanity is in action on climate change. Well, might be, might be a, a lot of different things, but then in here, even if you don't read the solution, which is here, you already have uh, an idea of what the, the, the person wants to do. So make people compete, meaning, I don't know, it could be a competition, it could be uh, economic competition, which it is the case in this case. Uh, uh, so there is a new element, even though uh, 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 so very few words are used. Uh, I think that if we had more time, we, we would have uh, had a look at uh, videos of actual talks. Oh, yes, but then I would have needed uh, internet connection. So anyhow, <laughs> this is not easy one, I guess. Uh, I have in the, the, the slides a, a, a couple of uh, links that might be useful for your preparation. Uh, are uh, interviews of the winners from last year, um, some kind of a, a focused uh, piece of uh, uh, different articles that we did on science communication, also the uh, lists, uh, the, the, the uh, YouTube uh, playlists of the uh, uh, two previous editions of the Formula Walls lab. Uh, so you will receive the, the slides if you, if you uh, uh, ask us yeah, you may uh, and I think uh, this is it. So just a reminder, uh, Formula Walls Lab Tokyo, the event is on 12th of May here at the University of Tokyo. Uh, but the abstract submission, that is a necessary step for you to uh, maybe be invited, is until 9th of April. And you can uh, uh, apply via uh, uh, each ever of these two websites. And if you have additional questions, you also have the address here. I guess we can go on to uh, Q and A. Thank you. Can I just ask yes. a question? Um, so there's the online application for making a presentation at Falling Walls Lab. What about just going along to join the audience? Is there a so this is afterwards. We will. Uh, we don't have. A, a I think in early April, probably, mm -hmm. around early April, we will also open, uh, but this is not application, it's yeah. just registration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we don't select the attendees, uh, registration for the event itself. Okay. Now we don't have it open yet. Now we prefer focusing on yeah. uh, getting people to apply. Yeah. That is our first target. Other questions? Yes. yes. Title and teaser. So, does it contain the same information, or is it like the expansion of the title? I would I would say it is title and subtitle to make it easier to understand. Uh, like I don't know if you often go to uh, uh, to uh, Japanese movies, you always have a title and then you have a tilde and then and then the subtitle is a bit longer. See, so it it gives a bit more detail about what you uh, uh, will. Uh, present the the title is, is extremely short and the format is uh, is uh, uh, is restricted to actually you have to use breaking the wall off and then you have 40 characters so it forces you to use this format whereas the, the teaser or subtitle or whatever you prefer to call it is uh, is is free 50 characters but you can you can uh, uh, use it however you you want. So yeah, subtitle I would say. Still, I would uh, uh, encourage you to work a lot on these two problem and solution. Uh, having a nice title and teaser is important, but, but having uh, a really great uh, uh, problem and solution parts is, is quite important. Actually, you also have uh, another part in uh, the abstract submission, which I didn't go over because uh, it is less important in terms of, uh, uh, I would say, expression. Uh, but you have also what we call a, a motivation statement at the pre-selection pre uh, stage, and that is a bit longer, 400 characters. So there you can, you know, explain why you are interested in this specific event. Uh, and this is also quite important for uh, the uh, pre-selection procedure. 
How long should be the CV? Uh, yeah, there's no limitation. Oh, okay. PDF format. I think there's like a, a, uh, a size limitation. I don't yeah, know if okay. it's one no, or two, no, but me. there's no, 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 no. Okay. No questions anymore. We were extremely clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so once again, if you want to have these uh, slides, the best way would be to, if you have a business card or if you leave us your email address, we will uh, uh, email a PDF version to you. And once again, if you have questions, you know where to go. So thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.